Yes, welcome everyone. Today we are going to discuss child advocacy policy and systems strengthening. By the end of the presentation, you should be able to know the concepts of child advocacy, policy development, systems strengthening, what they mean, and what tactics, what are the what are the tactics that we can use to achieve uh, policy change. Uh, what tactics can we use in uh, uh, child advocacy and how can we strengthen systems? We also look at uh, uh, how you can really interact, collaborate, and partner with different stakeholders in ensuring uh, the well being of children. And then the last aspect would be to do with how we monitor evaluate activities to do with child advocacy and advocating for child policy reforms. When we talk about child advocacy, we are basically referring to all the efforts that are geared towards promoting and protecting the rights, uh, the rights, the well-being, and the interests of children. It encompasses a number of activities that are aimed at influencing uh, policies, practices, and attitudes for the well-being of children. Okay, so basically, what we are talking about here is that uh, child advocacy is when you really uh, advocate for change. You 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 influence uh, changes in the welfare of children. So there are issues, of course, that really affect children. And how do we make sure that we will create an, uh, a very good environment for the development of children? So uh, we talk to policy makers and, and make them realize that things need to be done differently to create this change. And that is basically what we are referring to as uh, child advocacy. When we talk about policies, we are referring to uh, principles, guidelines, and regulations that are established by governments, organizations, and institutions to address specific issues affecting children. Okay, so the key things here are that policies are what uh, are, are the policies are the things that will really guide us uh, in different scenarios. So, for example, if you have a child who has been abused, what policies, uh, what laws, what guidelines, or what regulations are there? Okay, what what regulations are there uh, to guide uh, you know, or that direct people or that mandate parents to make sure that their children are not abused? What happens, for example, if uh, if, 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 if a parent is uh, is perpetuating abuse on children, okay, what institutions are violated? Uh, what system, what legal systems are available for the persecution uh, of the for, for the prosecution of of such cases? Okay, so that is what we term as policies. So we have different policies that have an impact on, on that have an impact on children okay so these policies are not only made by the government but they are also made by the organizations or institutions so the other statement that we uh, the other term that we need to know is systems strengthening. Uh, with this, we are basically recognizing that we have different entities, different mechanisms, and different capacities within the child, uh, uh, the child welfare systems. Okay, so what uh, what is the capacity of this system? If this system is lacking the ability 
to deliver child protection services to the optimum, then we need to carry out um, systems strengthening. Okay, so what systems are these? Or what's, what structures are these? Or what processes are these? So for example, this this let's assume we have a child who has been uh, sexually abused. Okay, so this case, if it happens and the committed needs to be reported, so uh, it is reported to uh, to the police, okay, and then the police can sanction or the police can carry out medical. Okay, but, uh, medical examination if they have the capacity. If they don't have the capacity, then the case is taken to a health facility for, uh, for examination and documentation of evidence of sexual abuse. And then, of course, the police will have to look for the perpetrator. Okay, and this perpetrator will be uh, brought to police and then taken to court and then if the ruling is made and the person is guilty they are sentenced so you can see that the, the we in this example we have a number of uh, entities okay the number of entities the police is an entity the courts of law uh, it's a different entity. We have the, the people who identify that the child is being abused, could be community members, uh, could be committee members who have been trained in identifying child abuse cases. And then uh, the health facility, you can see. So you can see that we have different entities and the processes are also different. So this system, Okay, this whole system, does it deliver what it is ought to deliver or there are their, their gaps and these gaps need to be uh, um, filled. Okay, so by system strengthening is uh, you want to make sure that uh, these different entities have the competences, uh, the expertise to really deliver uh, optimal and child welfare services. So why do we do uh, child protection advocacy? We want to raise awareness. With this, uh, we want people, the public, to really know uh, the issues that affect children and why it is very important to really address them. So um, awareness campaigns can be uh, carried out uh, in community meetings, in conferences, in workshops, in uh, on social media, on radio, on television. And others. Okay. So you have many avenues to make sure that uh, the message reaches out. You can use mainstream media or you can use social media platforms or uh, you can really uh, talk to children in schools, uh, use uh, uh, print media. You can also mobilize the communities at the local level, at the grassroots level. So with this, you can organize rallies, marches, town hall meetings, uh, and a number of other activities. We also do child protection advocacy to influence policies. Remember the policies are the guidelines that uh, guide us on what ought to be done in a, or on a particular child protection issue. Okay, so uh, sometimes there are gaps uh, in child protection policies. Okay, so um, there are there could be an emerging need about child protection 
that necessitates a policy. So how do you make sure that uh, you influence the policy makers to be able to uh, formulate and then uh, formulate and implement these policies? Okay, so we have a number of tactics that we can use. Lobbying is one of those. Okay, so lobbying is about creating uh, direct contact and communication with the policymakers, such that they give you audience for you to present to them the case for why it is very important to have a policy on a particular child protection issue. You can use expert um, expert testimonies uh, in, during these meetings with these legislators. Okay. Um, you also need to note that you do not only have to lobby with the legislators, you can also still lobby with the members of the executive. Because it is also very possible that you can have a child protection policy that comes directly from the executive. As I mean, uh, it can be a ministerial order, it can be an executive order, it can be an executive decree. The other thing is that we want to improve the capacity of those who are involved in child protection matters. Okay, so this uh, can be done at the local level using a number of uh, resources okay, to make sure that the individuals that are involved in activities of child protection have the expertise and the, the competences and the knowledge to really uh, carry out their activities. Working together is very important because as you have seen that we have a number of stakeholders involved. Okay, so these stakeholders do not work in isolation. It is very important that it is a conducive environment for collaboration. Using stories is very important in advocacy. Stories can create an emotional connection with the topic that is being shared. So it is very important that you think about uh, stories that you can share during your advocacy work. In developing policies, you need to understand that the policies are not created in isolation. They should be created in alignment with uh, other international child protection uh, principles and uh, declarations. Okay, so um, have a wider perspective towards child protection um, policies, and then also uh, think about the, the international conventions that the country is party to. These policies should be in alignment with that. But key a uh, uh, key issue here is also that. With the, with the policy development, it is very important to understand the stakeholders that are interested in the policy issue. Okay, it is very important to work with all the different stakeholders. It could be NGOs, community organizations, it could be uh, government entities and the rest. Okay, um, it is very important that uh, when developing a policy, it should be very comprehensive to address even matters that are emerging in the field of child protection. Systems strengthening is what we had really talked about earlier on. And then lastly, um, for all the campaigns that are done to strengthen uh, uh, systems, or even uh, for all the child advocacy activities, there is need to really monitor and see what is working and what is not working. What results are you getting? Are the results satisfying enough? Are you using the resources appropriately? All these questions can be answered through um, monitoring and evaluation. So it is very important to really document everything you're doing such that at the end of the campaigns, you can be able to reflect and learn from uh, what you have gone through. Thank you. That marks the end of this presentation.